and welcome to Roleplay Inn's Guide to Atlas Online. Um, this is a new pirate MMO uh, built in the same engine as Ark Survival Evolved. I'm assuming if you found this video you already know a bit about the game, so I'm not going to go into too many details there. Let's go ahead and start off by talking about what you would do if you just joined the game and you're trying to figure out what you want to do. Um, so as you can see right now, we're on a server selection screen. We can choose between PvP servers and PvE servers, and we can also choose between North America and Europe. And unless you have a very fast connection, I'd probably suggest um, picking the, the server that's going to be closer to you, just because this is a real-time combat game. You have to aim guns, you have to aim bows. So you want to make sure that... Um, latency isn't throwing off your combat a lot so let's go ahead and for the purposes of this guide we're going to start out on north america pve and what what we get now is it's going to ask us where we would like to spawn within the world um, what free port we want to spawn at you can see the the red cross swords and the blue homes the blue homes are kind of safe areas that you can spawn into um well, the red crossed swords are lawless areas. Um, so you're definitely, as a new player, I think you're probably going to want to pick a, um, a blue area. And you're probably going to want to pick somewhere in a temperate area, I'm guessing. Because in surviving the environment is very important in this game. For instance, if you're up in the polar regions, it's very cold. You can freeze to death. And there's also not a lot of food to be had. Uh, if you start in the desert, there's also not going to be a huge amount of food, though a little bit more than the polar regions. But um, you can you can overheat very easily. So the temperate is a nice balance um, that's going to make the, for the easiest survival for a new player coming into the game. So let's go ahead and we'll start out in E4 in the western temperate region. And so once you've selected your region... The next screen that it's going to take me to is it's going to um, allow me to build a Pathfinder. So a Pathfinder is my character. Um, you can see there's a list of sliders. Um, obviously, you can spend a very long time going over making your character look exactly the way that you want it. But for the purposes of this video, we're only really going to talk about the practical effect. And the, the main practical slider that we have here is we have height so you can have a very short character or a very tall character um apparently the hitbox on all characters is the same so making a, a very tall character isn't going to make you easier to hit nor is making a very short character going to make you less difficult to hit except for um the visual effect to the player on the other end so with a very short character it might be easier to hide um they might not realize that they can hit above you, and so it's it might be a little bit harder to throw them off. Uh, meanwhile, with a taller character, you know you're very very easy to see to another player. So a lot of people like to go with short characters. However, there is one advantage to going with a max height character, and that's that your vantage point is based off of the height of your character. So for instance, um, if you're walking into um, a building and things are up high. You're going to see those things more easily. That's going to be the point from which you're interacting with the world is a, is a point that's up higher. Um, one disadvantage to that, though, is say you're on a, a ship that's got like a very short um, amount of space between the deck that you're on and the deck above it. Um, I've actually, on my max height character that's my main on the PvP server, I've had to crouch around in ships because I'm so tall that it's actually hard to navigate. So in that right, having a short character is better. So let's let's go with a compromise between those two extremes, and we're just going to do a regular height character to get started. Um, and we'll just name ourselves Innkeeper from Roleplay In. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we've gone ahead and we've spawned into the world. Right now we're at a free port, which is a safe area. Other people can't really attack us here. 
and generally you're not going to see much in the way of aggressive animals unless you attack them first. So like, right now we see a bear, and that was really intimidating for me when I first started out. Like, oh no, there's bears, I can get eaten by a bear. But you can see I'm walking right up to this bear, and, and he's not doing anything. Um, and actually that's true of bears everywhere. But all, all the, um, the animals that you're going to see at a free port, they're not going to be aggressive unless you attack them and do something to cause them to attack you. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about the wildlife. Um, you really just need to worry about here. As you can see that down in the, the bottom right, there's those little snowflakes. That means my character is cold right now. So you can get very cold and you can get very warm. So that is a concern as well as... Um, you see those four colored bars at the, the bottom right. Um, those are my nutrition and food bars, or well, just nutrition bars. And then down below the little stomach thing is the, the food bar. And then the water drops is the, the water. So those are kind of determining my vital stats. And um, if I get low on food, I could starve to death. If I get low on water, I could dehydrate, you know, and the nutrition is probably the the biggest thing that's going to throw you for a loop. Even if you're comfortable with Ark or something, you've never played this particular game before. Getting too low in any particular nutrition type is going to kill me and getting too high in any particular nutrition type is going to kill me. So you want to make too sure to eat a mix of the yellow, which is vegetables the pink which is regular animal meat the orange which is berries and the blue which is fish all right so with all that said let's go ahead and we're gonna start by making ourselves some basic tools so we're gonna need um, skill points to invest in the ability to make skills right now we're gaining experience over time just standing here and as we gather things, that's going to bring our XP up a little bit too. So we'll just start out by gra ga or gathering some things that we'll need for the tools. I know we're going to need wood, so we're going to punch this tree a little bit, get ourselves some thatch and wood. We're going to need stone. Um, oh, we just gathered some fiber by harvesting from this plant. So we're going to need some fibers. And we're going to need stone. So for stone, unlike an arc, you actually can punch resources out of stone in this game. So we're just going to punch the stone a little bit. Um, and that's also going to give us flint, which is the other material we need. And with flint, stone, wood, and thatch, we should have the ability to make our basic starter tools once we get our first level, which will give us the ability to... Um, go ahead and um, make those tools all right so i'm going to go ahead and cut forward to when i level up or actually no i'm going to level up here in half a second so we'll we'll keep the camera rolling and punch some stones okay so right now i've punched the stones and the trees and you can see that that did damage to me um and I have this little broken bone symbol, which means that I'm injured. Um, so I'm going to move slower until I recover that. However, since I don't have any negative conditions that are actually draining health, I'm not cold enough to actually be losing health. I should regain that health over time, and I should be fine. So now that we've leveled up, first we have to pick an attribute point. Um, we're going to go ahead and put attributes into whatever we need to benefit our character. So you have an option between health, which raises your maximum health, food, which raises the amount of food that you can have, um, oxygen, which raises how long you can stay underwater, um, stamina, which is your energy that you consume while doing things, um, water, which is the amount of water that you can drink, um, fortitude, which is your ability to resist being knocked out, resist um, things such as the environment, like um, hot, extreme hot, or extreme cold. Um, and it also, it makes it, I, I've heard, a little bit easier to keep your nutrition stats from killing you. Um, 
weight is your maximum carry weight and then intelligence is both the cooldown for abilities that you can earn later in the game and also um, the bonuses that you get if you're crafting from a blueprint so for right now we're a very new player we're just trying to get into the game and survive i think fortitude is really the best stat for at least your first five points because it's just going to make it a lot easier to survive those hot cold nutrition all the different things that can kill you starting out and it's not a bad stat at any stage of the game so we're just going to start by putting some points into fortitude and then once we have a point into fortitude we're going to go over to survivalism we have three points to invest um, I'm going to take Tools of the Trade, which is both going to give us the option to make spears and open up some of the important skills that we're going to work on very early. And we're also going to get the basics, which is the ability to make simple armor, simple tools, a bed, other things that are very essential for you starting out. We need both of these skills. So we'll go ahead and grab both of those. And now we have some crafting options. So we go over to our inventory, which you can open by pressing I, by the way. Um, we're going to take a look and we see we have the ability to craft a stone pick based on the resources that we've already gathered. I'm going to go ahead and do that because that's going to make gathering the flint that we need for a hatchet easier as well as getting the wood without damaging ourselves. So let's go ahead and equip that. And it takes a second to equip you can see. And that's because there's different item slots and you can only have certain items and certain slots and only so many slots filled, um, which becomes very important when you get things like say pistols that take a long time to reload. You can put pistols all over your body and start drawing out pistols to fire ones that have been preloaded. Um, so it's very important to manage your slots later on. For now, it's not a big deal. So we're gonna get a little bit of wood to make a hatchet and we're gonna get a little bit of flint to um make that hatchet as well and then we're going to go ahead and we are going to craft ourselves a basic hatchet now that we have the hatchet let's go ahead and we're going to do um, spears next because i want to make armor but you can see that this armor takes hide which means we're going to need to kill some things to get hide so we need a little bit more wood and thankfully we just made a hatchet so it should be very easy to gather wood now. Oop. Oop. I accidentally equipped the, or equipped the ability to make hatchets rather than the hatchet itself. That's an easy mistake to make. Um, make sure you're dragging your item from up in the inventory and not down from the crafting or you uh, equip the ability to craft things rather than the ability to um, use the items that you've already made so now we've got the hatchet equipped and gather a little bit of wood and takes wood flint and fiber we're running pretty low on fiber so i'm just going to go ahead and gather up a little bit more fiber before i get started making spears um, the thing with spears that's important to remember is that spears are well you would think oh that's a melee weapon it does very poor melee damage um it actually does most damage as a thrown weapon. So you want to make multiple spears because you're going to be chucking these things at the things that you're trying to kill. So you want to have multiple spears so that if one breaks or you fail to recover it, that you can um, keep chucking spears, especially if you're fighting high enemy or opponents that won't die to a single spear. Um, let's also gather a little bit more flint we shouldn't need too much of that but it's very easy to gather now that we have a pick so we'll make our spear and we're just gonna hit e and then hold e to craft as many as we possibly can which is apparently two <laughs> all right two should be enough for now so we're gonna find ourselves either a chicken or a hare the pigs are, you know, of course going to produce more, and the bear would produce a lot, but at this stage of the game, oh, we're hungry. So, if we're hungry, we want to just go over, look at some berries in our inventory, and hold E. And that's 
going to cause us to eat the berries. Now, since we're eating just berries and nothing else, you can see there's an arrow over the orange stat there. And that means that the vitamin that we get from eating berries is raising. Now, if I just eat berries and nothing else to stay, um, to stay fed, then eventually I'm gonna reach a problem where I'm gonna have too much of that one stat and too low of the others. And either of those things can kill me. All right, so now we found a chicken. The chicken's not gonna fight back, so it's gonna be pretty easy to take down. All right, we've killed ourselves a chicken. I'm gonna grab this ax and we're gonna cut him up. We're gonna get the skin, which is a form of hide. And I think it's gonna take more than one um, chicken to make our full set of armor. So we're gonna go and we're gonna kill some more chickens. And I'm also gonna gather a little bit more fiber um, you can see that like the pants in this set would take 50 fiber and we do not have 50 fiber however um, it's pretty easy to do what I'm doing just go around kill chickens chop them up gather more fiber so I'm gonna cut until I have what I need to make the full set of armor all right so I've gone ahead and I've killed myself some rabbits and chickens and I should have enough materials now to create um, the full set of armor that I was going for uh, in addition to gathering a little bit more fiber I had to do that as well so first we're gonna go ahead and just craft one of every single piece now let's take a look at this armor first off obviously what the armor is doing is it's gonna reduce incoming damage but there's another purpose and another reason that I made this armor beyond that if you hover over it, you see it has a value, a hypothermic insulation value, um, and it also has a hyperthermic insulation value. So what that means is that this particular piece of armor will keep you from overheating as well as underheating if you're wearing it. It protects you from both extremes. Um, certain pieces of armor actually might have, say, a hypothermic insulation, but a penalty to hyperthermic insulation for instance a set of fur armor for that's good for living in the polar regions but this starter armor gives both which makes it really good no matter where you want to be so let's go ahead and we're going to throw this full set on to protect us from the elements as well as any combat that we get into now that we actually have that um you can see that i've leveled up again so i'm going to go ahead and put more points into fortitude and now I've got additional points. Now really at this point, everybody should probably take these two skills first, but at this point, it's, it's important to determine what is my objective? What am I trying to do on the starter aisle? Um, and that's gonna vary from person to person. You may be starting out with a group of friends and you have a specific role that you're going to fill in that group. Um, for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that you're alone and your objective is to get off the starter aisle with the abilities that you need to go out and successfully settle somewhere other than the starter aisle. Um, so I want the advanced tools because of that. That's going to give me the ability to gather resources more easily. Um, and it's also going to give me the ability to gather certain resources that I couldn't gather without tools. For instance, that shovel is going to enable me to dig for water and potatoes, which would be really good if I'm starting out in an area that I need to find a lot of wa water or that um, certain types of food might be scarce. Um, so the other thing that the smithy does is the smithy is actually a storage device. You can store things inside the smithy, which is going to be really important when we get our boat. So let's go ahead and we're going to just save our points until we have eight points for the advanced tools and close out of that for now. You don't have to spend your points as you get them if you want to save for something bigger in the end. Now I can also see that my hunger is very low. I'm about to start starving again. So let's go ahead and we're going to make ourselves a craftable campfire because we got a lot of raw meat killing those rabbits and chickens. Um, and that raw meat can be cooked up in order to provide some nutrition. Also, there's an egg on the ground right here. I'm gonna grab that too, and that's gonna provide me some nutrition as well. So let's go ahead and we're gonna cut down a tree just to get ourselves a little bit of wood to fuel the fire with. And we're gonna place this fire. 
So I've already created it. You right click it and hit place or you can just hover over it and hit E. Place it down, access inventory. We're gonna put the wood that we just gathered as well as all that meat that we gathered. And once it's all in there, we'll go ahead and light the fire. And now that that meat is in there and we've got wood in the fire and it's burning, it's gonna generate three different things over time. Um, the first it's gonna generate us some coal which we don't need to worry about too much, but that's gonna be useful later when you're trying to make gunpowder and things. Coal is an ingredient in that kind of thing. Um, it just generated a cooked meat, which is something that we can use to, um, to eat, and it's gonna give us better values, better nutrition, and better um, food bar than just eating the raw meat. And finally, you can see these green bars on some of the meat things that are slowly diminishing over time that's the decay timer on the meat so in just a second here you should see um, a rotten meat be generated when this decays so it's a good idea when you have a bunch of meat stacked up if you don't want rotten meat which sometimes you do want rotten meat say you're trying to tame a vulture or something that actually it eats rotten meat so rotten meat would be useful in that context but if you don't want rotten meat if you want to keep your meat as good as possible for as long as possible you want to do what i just did and keep those stacks as high as you can if you see a stack that's low um pull it out drag it back in and then it will uh, create a new stack because each stack decays separately but items that are stacked together um it's going to make it so that there's only one decay timer for all those items all right so we're real hungry now i'm going to eat four of those meat that i just cooked by hovering over it and hitting E. And then I'm gonna add that egg in there too, just to get a variety of nutrition. Okay, so we should be good for a little while now on food. So our next objective, like I said, we wanna make a boat and get off this island because we can only reach level eight on this island. Um, and then it's just gonna stop our progression. So we don't wanna live here. Uh, the other problem is that boats decay very quickly while you're on this island and you can't place down structures. So you can't really make a base for yourself while you're here. Um, unless you're just staying here for a short time and using a boat a boat as kind of a, a temporary base. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make the boat as our temporary base. We're going to provision it to get the heck out of here. And then we're going to leave and we're going to find a new place to settle. So we're going to look. We have the options between a raft and a ramshackle sloop. And the ramshackle sloop is just a little bit better of a boat than the raft. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Um, it takes 75 hide, 225 fiber, and 250 wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut while I go back out into the forest, gather some more wood, hide, and fiber. And then we're gonna come back, we're gonna get our boat underway, and we'll show you what to do once you have a boat. All right, so we went ahead and we gathered up the materials that we need to create ourselves a ramshackle sloop. Um, in the process, you can see by that little weight icon down in the right hand side that we're, uh, we're overburdened. Um, and what overburdened means is that we're moving more slowly because there's a lot of weight in our inventory. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of some non-essential items. We've gathered a few more berries than I think we actually need. I also went ahead and previously dropped the stone and flint that I had since that's pretty easy to get more of. Though I kept the metal since that's a little bit rarer at this stage of the game. So I went ahead and dropped those berries. You can see we're not overburdened anymore, so we're moving normal speed again. Let's go ahead and talk to the shipyard room. And you can see this is highlighted in blue. So <clears throat> we can go ahead and make it. All right. So we have our first boat. And this is really the start of the game, practically. This is like your home you're gonna live out of this boat for a while. So, now that we have our boat, let's go ahead and check it out. We've got a steering wheel, we've got two sails, and it has a deck, and then it's got this below, below deck kind of hold thing that's kind of a little bit deceptive. You can't really put much down there. Um, the other thing is that if you fall down in there, you can't hop back out. 
However, there is a workaround for that. You just look at the steering wheel, hit use steering wheel, and you'll be back out. But I tend to put something over that or a ladder leading out of that so that you can get out of your hold if you need to get out of your hold. It's kind of dumb to get stuck in your hold. All right, so first off, we're gonna go ahead and move our boat away from this location. There's, you know, if there's other players playing, they might be trying to spawn their boats and it's just kind of cluttered. So we wanna, we'll move to a little bit better location and we're gonna continue trying to provision ourselves because we're not really ready, ready to leave the Freeport yet. So in order to move, we need to have our sails up. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to both our sails and we're gonna put fully open sail. And with both of our sails fully open, we're gonna hop on the steering wheel and we can go ahead and steer to where we need to go. Now, if you're trying to move fast, um, that up in the, the top right, you can kind of see there's a ship icon up there and there's an arrow. That arrow is telling us what direction the wind is going. Um, and so you want the wind behind you whenever possible or you can turn your sails to catch the wind better. So if the, w the wind is behind your sails, even if you're not moving directly in line with the wind, you can still be moving full speed as though you were. Now you can see we're kind of stopped and that's because we're getting run aground on some shore, but this is probably a good enough sp or spot that we can go ahead. Oh, no, we'll move over there. We're gonna go ahead and anchor in a second and then we're gonna get, um, get to provisioning our ship. Now, be careful when you're going around. You can run your ship aground and it will do damage to it. So when we get close enough to the shore, we're gonna go ahead and hit X. X will drop our anchor and now we're not moving anymore. All right. So we're anchored over at a little different spot. And like I said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this boat as a kind of a mobile base for the moment. So we've leveled up again gathering all that stuff i'm going to put the plane into fortitude again and we're still not quite at our eight points available um so since we don't have eight points let's go ahead and look into putting a bed on our ship because we should have the ability to craft ourselves a simple bed oh perfect we already have the materials for it if you didn't you'd go out and gather whatever you need more of Let's go ahead and place that bed onto our ship somewhere. So we're going to go back to the back of our ship, hit E to climb the rope ladder, and we're just going to put that bed right up here between that hole and the sail. Once it turns blue, we know that we're able to place it. Okay, so it's blue. Perfect. All right, so now we have a bed. And what that does, um, what the use of having a bed is if we die, that bed is actually a respawn point now. And that's gonna be very important when we go out exploring because you might land on an island that had some hostile creatures you weren't aware of, you get killed. And as long as you're pretty near to where you docked your boat, you're gonna be able to respawn and um, be right back to your boat. So that's a very important thing to have. Um, now let's go ahead and I'm just gonna gather some general resources for a little bit or maybe kill some creatures, something to level up so we can get those eight points so that I can get um, my advanced tools skill. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and cut until I level up again, and then I'll show you what to do once you have your advanced tools. Okay, so I just went around and I grabbed myself some new resources. And first off, let's take a look at our tools. You can see there's little blue bars underneath them, and those blue bars are showing their current durability. So once that durability is all the way gone, they can break. So I'm just gonna hover over it and I'm gonna click repair. And as long as you have the resources in your inventory, that option will be there. Otherwise, it'll show you what resources you're deficient in, so you can go gather what you need to repair your tools. So we'll go ahead and repair those tools. And I think I'm also gonna put a cramp campfire on the boat. Now, that might sound insane, like, oh my gosh, this guy's gonna burn his boat down. 
Um, and that's originally what I did as a noob. I didn't put a campfire on my boat because I figured, you know, I'm going to burn my boat down if I stick a, a campfire on it. So why would I do that? Um, and the thing is, you actually won't burn your boat down by putting a campfire on it. But for some reason, the campfire will not spread to the deck of your boat. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right next to where I drive my ship from. And the reason that I'm doing this is two things. First off, if I have any raw meat in my inventory, I do have a little bit. I can go ahead and we can throw that in there. And we now have some stored up raw meat. And we'll go ahead and we're going to split a stack. Put, say, um, we're going to put 50 of our wood into that campfire. So we can both use that to cook meat while we're out in the ocean. And also if it gets cold, say you're going to, you know, a tundra region or somewhere that's a little bit colder and your character is cold while you're out on the ocean, you can light it up. It's going to generate heat. And so you can go to colder areas and actually survive them. Okay, now we're going to actually apply this level up. Uh, like I said, I'm putting my first five points into fortitude, so we're going to do that again. And now we have enough skill points for advanced tools. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab that advanced tool skill. <clears throat> and we're going to check what it takes to create a smithy. So we're missing a little bit of hide and we're missing one stone. If we have one more stone and a little bit more hide, we should be able to create a smithy. So I'm going to cut until I have the resources to do that, and then I'll show you what we're going to do with our smithy. All right, so we have the resources to make our smithy, but I decided to stop to show you guys something on my way back. I found these pepper plants out here, um, and these are going to vary a bit from region to region, what plants you're going to find, but every once in a while you'll see a plant that's going to do something unusual. It looks unusual compared to the plants you've seen before. So I walk up to it and I hit E, and I'm gathering wild peppers. I'm also getting pepper seeds that I could use to um, plant um, peppers in farm beds later on if I decide that I want to become a farmer. Um, and what that's going to do is that's going to give me items for the vegetable slot, which is going to be important. This is something I would have had to gone back out and do later, but since I found these peppers now, I'm just going to go ahead and do it now, and I won't have to provision myself with vegetables before we leave. Um, now I've got the ability to make the smithy, and I'm going to actually do that before I get back to the boat, because it's going to probably weigh less in my inventory than the base resources to make it. So it's a good idea some of the time when you're out gathering and you gather the resources you need to create something, you just go ahead and make it right then and there. That way you can um, you can move around a little bit easier, less encumbered. So I'll go ahead and cut until I'm back to the, my boat, and then I'm going to show you how to use the smithy. All right, so we're back on the boat, and we have the ability to place and use a smithy now. So let's go ahead, and we're going to place that right here. The way we're placing it, it's kind of to the side of the boat. So if you look up, you can see that's where we climb up. We don't want to necessarily do it right to the back of the boat or else it's going to kind of get in the way of us getting onto our boat. But right here is a good location. And we're going to take a look inside of it. And there's both an inventory window and a crafting window. So you can actually drag items into the inventory window and it's going to work as a storage. Uh, eventually, you don't really want to be storing your berries and your smithy. They don't have... A real purpose there however for right now we're trying to keep the weight of this boat low because the more weight there is on a boat the slower it moves so if we do another storage container it's going to add additional weight to our boat why do that when we can just use our smithy as our storage device and as a crafting tool so let's go ahead and throw everything that we have onto the smithy and now our inventory is much much cleaner so i'm going to put that meat onto the fire since we do have that, and that is a storage device for raw meat. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at what we can make now that we have this smithy. So there's weapons, melee, um, and if you look under melee weapons, there's the ability to make a metal pick, or a metal hatchet, and a metal uh, sickle. The sickle is for gathering plants. The 
um, pick is for gathering um, stone and metal. And then the hatchet is, you know, what, what your current hatchet and current stone do, just a or current pick do, just a little bit better. So let's go ahead and make a pick to get started out. And a hatchet. And we still have enough to make a sickle, so we'll get all three of those. Now it jumps those items directly into the smithy rather than your inventory. So before you use them, you're going to want to go ahead and drag them over to your main inventory and then drag them out onto your skill bars. We're going to replace our old hatchet and our old pick, and we're going to put this into slot three. And now we are provisioned with metal tools that are going to do a lot more for us than the old tools did. Something else that we have access to now is shovels. And shovels can be used to dig up water as well as to dig up um, sometimes gold coins, though I've yet to receive one from that. Um, and very often they give potatoes, a little bit of fiber. Uh, so they're, they're kind of a handy thing to have around. I'm going to go ahead and make a, a shovel and just throw it into our inventory for now. Uh, the shovel is a long slot item, which means it takes up the long slot in your back. You can see right now we have a spear right there. So I'm not going to equip the shovel because if I equip the shovel, it's going to replace the spear. But if we need that shovel, we can just drag it over and it'll swap out with the spear. Give it a second. And now we have the shovel on our back and we'll swap the spears back since we'll probably need those more, especially if we go out into a more hostile region where we might get attacked. All right. So now that we have that, we have the ability to make better tools. We have a campfire to keep us warm. We have a bed to respawn on. So the things that looks like we're missing right now is we're missing water for the journey because this salt water around us is not drinkable. Um, we need fresh water if we're going to survive the journey ahead. And we also... Um, we want to have the ability to place some structures once we get out there. So that's going to take more skills. Let's take a look at what we got right now. So we have um, the ability to take the water keeper skill, which will give us um, the ability to make water skins. But for that's not really good enough. We actually need something better. So we need to go into the cooking tree. And then once we go into the cooking tree, we, um, we're going to have the ability to create water storage barrels. And those can catch rainwater and really just keep you going. So let's go ahead and make one of those before we set out on our journey. And then the other thing that I really want is I want the ability to make basic structure, which is going to be under um, construction and mercantil or mercantilism. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So... If you look under construction and mercantilism, there is basics of building, which allows you to build thatch structures, as well as um, handyman, which gives the ability for storage boxes and things like that. Um, and then if you go down to secrets of building, you get the ability to make wooden structures and you get the ability to make um, things like ladders and such. So it looks like those are the, the main skills that we're going to need next. If we want to go and successfully establish a base on another island, we're going to need the secrets of building skill from construction and mercantilism, and we're going to need the, um, the second water keeper ability. All right, so I haven't gathered the, the needed levels yet. However, I'm running into a couple issues that I'm gonna work through on camera because I'm sure it'll be helpful for you guys to see this. So first off, my thirst bar is getting pretty low. Now back at the Freeport over there with the structures, I can find a water source that's gonna give me fresh water, but you know, I don't really wanna go all the way back to the Freeport. And I've got myself a shovel, so how about I see if I can just dig up some water. So we're going to find a little grassy area. And we're going to equip that shovel to our spear slot. And we're going to go ahead and 
see if we can dig here. We're finding some stone, but we're not finding water. All right, so I found an area that we can dig for water. So what you do is you aim your shovel at the ground, and then you hit the left click. Oh, I missed it. So once you have the left click, it brings up that little mini game that you just saw. And I want to click it while that bar is over the white area. And the more times I hit that in a row, the more water I dig up. So you can go ahead, dig up as much water as you need, um, drink it up. You can't fill a water skin from this particular um, thing. But you see I've created a water skin, and if I hit five over it, it does nothing. So don't bother trying to fill your water skin. You're gonna need to find an actual pool of fresh water to do that, or you can fill it from a water barrel, I believe. Um, but um, this is a good way to get water. The other thing that you could do if you um, if you don't have a shovel, say you don't have a shovel and you're out on an island and you're dying of thirst, you can actually hit X to drop down to the ground and then left click to dig the water up. You can see when I left click it says the water is depleted. That's because that's a pretty wide area of water depleted when you dig up a spout of water. Um, but if you haven't dug there recently and there's water available, you can actually just dig it up by hand. It gives much less than a shovel, but it'll keep you from uh, dying of thirst. All right, so now that we've got that taken care of, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to re-equip my spears, and let's go ahead and make a couple extra spears, because the one thing that I'm concerned about on my journey, I've got um, red meat, so I'll be okay on that. I'll, I've got vegetables at this point, so I can deal with that. And I've got berries, but I don't have any fish. So there's a real concern that when I go out on the ocean that I could actually die of a deficiency of the vitamin that comes from fish. So um, I want to go into the water and I want to kill myself some fish. And you're going to find that hunting in the water is a little bit different than hunting on land. It's a lot more difficult than hunting on land. Um, let's go ahead and craft all of these. We'll probably need them. Um, so first off, I'm going to put my final point into fortitude. I don't generally raise fortitude above that level. Uh, however, if you live in a very cold or very hot region, you might find it convenient to. For the most part, though, five points into fortitude. Um, that's going to get you a lot of what you need. Also, now we've got some skill points. I'm going to go ahead and take cooking. And... Water storage. So we'll be able to make that water barrel once we're done with the fish. But let's start by finding ourselves a fish to kill. So we're just going to dive into the water. And when you dive into the water, you're going to notice, first off, my character is actually so cold that he's starting to freeze right now. So we're going to need to watch that. We're also going to need to watch that lung icon that's popped up. That's how much oxygen we have under here. So let's see if we can spear ourselves a fish. kill the sea bass and it's a little bit harder to harvest than say a chicken or something that's on land because you have to manage your buoyancy while managing the fact that you're trying to chop the fish up but we're getting a little bit of meat and as long as we've got say 50 or so meat that should be sufficient to get us out to wherever we're trying to go oh that was a live sea bass spears but yeah you just go under and you kill fish until you have about 50 fish meat the other thing you should definitely be concerned about is there is one type of aggressive creature on the um the starter isle and that's a manta ray so if you see a manta ray they look very different from the fish they're much larger than the fish uh, you're probably going to want to avoid it for now or if you're feeling pretty confident you could try hucking some spears at it because if you do kill one it's going to provide a lot of fish meat. It also provides some fish oil, um, which will be useful in the later stages of the game. 
So, you know, killing a mana ray is not a bad deal if you can get away with it. Um, but for the purposes of the starter guide, I'm going to advise against going head to head with the mana ray. It's just a good way to, to get yourself killed. And there's enough non aggressive fish, you should be able to get the meat that you need. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip forward until I have the rest of the meat and I'm back on the boat. All right, so we're back on the boat, and I got really lucky. I found myself a beached manta ray, which is a great source of fish meat, and I didn't have to fight it, so um, pretty happy about that. That's a good way to get your fish meat whenever you see a manta ray washed up on the beach. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and throw that fish meat in there and get going so that we can cook ourselves some fish and get a little bit of that blue vitamin in there. You can see that that's much lower than the other ones now since I've been neglecting it. I'm going to throw some resources that we have back into the smithy. And then we're going to take a look at what we need to make ourselves a water barrel. And I've gone ahead and I've pre-looked at this. So I know I know this. there's one resource that's going to throw us for a loop here. We're looking at um, barrel. Hover over it. It takes fiber. Uh, that's going to be easy to get. But what we're missing is we're missing carotenoid. And what carotenoid is, is um, it comes from like bones or um, bugs. It's, it's basically bone matter. Um, and we've killed a bunch of hares. We've killed a bunch of fish. We've killed a bunch of chickens. We're not getting carotenoid. We're going to need to go for something more aggressive. Um, so I think I'm going to try a pig and see if we can get some carotenoid from that. But pigs are much, much more dangerous to take on than, um, than the chickens and the hares. Because while the chickens and the hares, we've been killing them and they just run away, and you can one-shot half of them. Um, when we attack this pig, it's going to fight back. And not only is it going to fight back, but every pig in the area of the pig that we're trying to kill will become aggressive. So we're trying to look for an isolated pig or maybe some pigs that are down a hill that you know we can use as a vantage point. Like I could try to fight this bear from up here though. Um, the bear will probably just climb right up here and kill me. So if you can find like a sheer cliff face or something, like this rock here is a little bit of a better vantage point. It might not be as good, but I don't see other pigs in the area. So let's go ahead and we'll see if we can take this pig. So I'm gonna charge up our left click attack fully, that's the ranged attack, to give maximum damage. All right, we've got the pig angry, and he's caught up on a tree, perfect. All right, let's finish him off with a right click, perfect. That was much easier than I anticipated, great. So now you see, as we're killing this pig, that I've gathered 55 bone, and the bone is a form of keratin which I can then go take back to my boat and we're going to make this water barrel. So, <clears throat> yeah, in order to get carotenoid, um, if you see that material, you're going to have to go and you're going to have to kill some bigger creatures, something bigger than a chicken or a hare. Um, but if you do some proper preparation like I did, it, it's not too hard. So we'll throw the carotenoid in, we'll look up the barrel again, Oh, I forgot to grab the fiber. All right, let's uh, cut forward to me having fiber. All right, so I gathered the fiber that I need, and I'm gonna go ahead and snuff out my campfire at this point because I have some cooked fish, and I need that wood for if in case I get cold on the journey out of here. So we're gonna save the wood. Um, drop the rest of the meat that we have in there. We'll grab the coal out. And we'll get rid of this rotten meat entirely. You can just press O while hovering over it to drop or right click and drop. It'll, it'll disappear eventually. I just drop rotten meat wherever I see it. Um, like that. So, now that we've got all the, um, the fiber that we need, we're going to look up the barrel again, and we're going to go ahead and craft one. You could craft more than one if you want a large supply of water, but right now we're in a very small boat. It has very limited weight. I'm not going to overdo it by making a bunch of different things of water. So we're just going to get this one piece here, and let's go ahead and put our barrel right at the helm of our boat. And so there's a couple things 
that we can do with the sparrow. First off, if I go back over to the Freeport and go to that pool of water there, um, which I will do if it doesn't rain by the time that I leave, you can fill some water skins from the pool over there and um, put them into this barrel to keep them. Another thing that you can do is if you just open the lid and it rains, the water is going to fill up. However, if the lid is open and there's water in there and it's not raining, rather than filling up, it's going to be um, evaporating. You'll be slowly losing water over time. So it's a good idea to open barrels when it's raining, close them when it's not raining. We'll close that up. Well, it's empty, so we'll just leave it open in case it does start raining. Um, so now we're just going to try to get up to the level that we're able to go and um, get that uh, building skill. Oh, i got to apply my do a weight limit increase right now. That's pretty good early on. So we now have construction and mercantilism. We're going to take the basics of building. And then we need weaving and secrets of building in order to get wood structures, which thatch structures are so easily destroyed. I, I wouldn't even really bother with them. They're, they're good if you need some kind of cheap structure that'll just give you an enclosure, but they don't they don't hold up to any kind of attack. Even a, a bear could tear them up pretty easily. So um, we're going to get that before we leave so that we have the ability to make ourselves a real base and wherever we're going, where we're going, make it out of wood. Um, so let's, let's go out. We'll do some more hunting or gathering or whatever we want to do to get those last two levels that we'll need. We're getting three skill points a level. We need four more points to get it. So we need, oh, we're level seven. Well, that means that we're probably leaving without the ability to make a real base. That's fine, actually. Um, we've got our, our uh, smithy. We've got our campfire. We've got our water barrel, bed. We have the essentials. So we can get those last levels after we leave the Freeport. And we'll get the ability to um, to make those wooden structures. Um, it's going to be a little bit more dangerous once we leave the Freeport. I might find lions or some other naturally aggressive creatures on the island that I'm going to. Um, but for now, I think we have everything we need other than the fact that... Um, we don't have an actual water supply. So let's go back over to the free port real quick. And I'm going to gather up some water in the water skin that I have. That way, if I get thirsty while I'm out on the ocean, I'll have something to drink from. Because otherwise, you know, I could be out on the ocean and I could get thirsty and there's, there's nothing but salt water. And so I'd either have to find land to dig up a spout and drink a spout, which is very, very non-efficient, very non-ideal especially if you're out in the ocean quite a ways. Um, that's not necessarily going to be something you could practically do. Um, you, you just want a little bit of water supply before you ever you, you head out very far from land. So let's head back over to the Freeport and I'll, um, I'll grab some water in that water skin. And then we're going we're gonna to find a place to settle. All right, so we're in the Freeport and I'm going to show you a couple things while we go through here. First off, on our right hand side, we have the cosmetics vendor that we can use to um, purchase things like um, figureheads for our ship. We could use him to purchase uh, dyes, and we could use them to purchase um, clothing items. Um, probably the most practical thing that he has, though, is he has the items that can be used to tame items that other animals that aren't otherwise tameable. For instance, you can tame a drake or dragon using one of the items that he gives you. Um, so those are some very end game canes that you'd probably use in like massive battles, such as um, an invasion of another player's base on a PVP server. Um, over here, well, first off, you can see there's signs pointing us to the water. So it's not too hard to find the water since there's a bunch of directions to find it. 
but this is the crew recruiter. And once we have gold, this is going to be one of the first things we'll want to do with our gold, is we're going to want to hire crew members to crew our ships. Um, things like manually moving the sails, manually raising and lowering them, um, or turning them to be with the wind. You can actually station crew on your sails to do that. You can station crew on cannons to man them. Um, if you take crew off of any station while you're sitting at port, but you have resources on the ship, they'll actually repair the ship for you. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of very important functions that crew serve. Um, so here you see we found a pool of fresh water. So we're gonna drink a little bit while we're here. And then we've got that water skin in our inventory. So we're just gonna hit that five button and it fills it up. So once we get back to the ship, we'll throw the water skin at the helm of the ship. And then um, we're gonna set out and we're gonna go sail the wide seas and find where we can find, find a place to call our own. All right, so we're back on the boat and you can see that I'm on the helm and up in the very top right, there's a little weight icon and it shows a bar that's mostly full. And what's that sh what that is showing me is that I have about 80% of the max weight of my ship is filled. That slows my ship down significantly. The more weight you have, um, the slower your ship goes and it really, really starts to penalize you after 50%. If you have about 50% weight, you're gonna be moving about 80% of your maximum speed. If you've got over that, it starts to drop off pretty steeply. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got in here. We've got a bunch of flint. I don't think we really need the flint that badly. Um, I think we've got a little bit more even fresh meat than we really need. Um, we can gather more stone quite easily and more stone is quite um, heavy. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that. And I, I think even the wood, let's got a stack of 76 over there that'll probably get us through what we need to get through let's drop this 440 wood um, I think the rest is valuable enough that we should be able to keep it if our weights doing okay so uh, we're still a little bit heavy let's take a look let's get rid of some more of our meat I'm stuck All right, well, I think it's lar largely the smithy that's pushing us over the weight limit, and that smithy's pretty valuable. We're going to want that when we get where we're going. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to set sail. If you really, really wanted to be maximum speed, you've already got some tools from the smithy and stuff, so you could just destroy your smithy and put a, um, a different storage container there, or um, you'd need more skills to unlock the next storage container. But... Um, so what I'm doing right now is I just raised the anchor and then I'm turning around so that I'm not faced at the shore. If I head straight at the shore, open the, the sails while I'm aimed at the shore, I'm going to start running aground and doing damage to my ship. So let's get aimed somewhere a little bit safer and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the sails and we're going to start heading out into the ocean. And once, once we're moving, I'm going to go ahead and determine where we're headed. Um, that's because I'm a little bit more experienced at navigation in the game. For a new player, I'd recommend that you take a look at your atlas before you set sail. All right, so we're gonna fully open both of our sails. And now I'm gonna head and look at my map. So I hit I to go to inventory. Oh, hungry. Hunger can get very annoying in this game if you don't put some stats into hunger points. I don't generally ever do that because I consider it a convenience stat. Um, and I want things that give me more practical value rather than not having to eat as often. But if it really, really annoys you, you might put some points in there just to stop your character from groaning every 10 seconds. All right, so we bring it up and we're going to look over to Atlas. And if we look at Atlas, we can zoom in and out. It shows us that we're at E4. So 
directly west of us is D4, which is a lawless region. Um, and that would have different implications on a PvP server than it does on a PvP server. Um, what it means for us on a PvP server is that we can't claim it um, and that people can come along and steal our stuff very easily and our stuff is never defended because there's never peace periods. Now, since we're on a PvE server right now, there's no peace periods, which are areas that your islands are protected. So it's a little bit safer to settle in a lawless area. I think you still might take more decay there. Um, so it might be a good idea if you, um, if you don't want to, um, to just head out and settle right away, you might talk to some guilds. You can see Privateers Guild owns this area. Company of Chris Souther owns this area. Um, and so those actually are areas that um, other player companies own. And so other player companies can kind of control who builds there. They can set a tax rate so that they get a little bit of the resources. And they'll probably help you out, like most of the, the companies that I've talked to. They're willing to help out people who are going to settle on those islands because they do get those taxes. So there's a little bit of mutual benefit if they help you and you help them by, by generating taxes for them. So talk to some guilds, see if you might want to join one, um, and determine where you want to settle. Now something else you can see, you can see there's some unclaimed islands that have numbers like 57 on them. And what that means is that if you have 57 guild points, that you can actually go ahead and um, claim that island by building a certain structure and paying an upkeep for that. So if you want to control an island and be the guild that has the people paying taxes to you, you can you can start working that direction. I wouldn't advise that for a new player coming into the game unless you're coming in with a solid group of people and you think you're going to have the activity to run run an island. Um, otherwise, I'd just talk to you know one of these groups that have an island or settle in the lawless region until you can get to know some people and decide where you'd like to settle permanently. So you can see right here, we're headed west into the lawless region and um, we're, we're going ahead and moving towards any of those islands there that we can just set up a base and get settled. Um, now, if you weren't sure what direction you're heading, you don't want to map, watch the map that, that closely or something, you can actually look at this compass by pressing M, and that shows you a little mini version of the atlas where you're headed, and it also shows you, you know, if you're headed north, south, east, west, so it's a pretty useful tool for navigating. I find the compass hard to read sometimes. If you're headed directly into the sun or something, it might just be easier to use the atlas, but if, uh, if it's easily visible, the compass can be a pretty useful tool. Um, the other thing that I'm going to go ahead and take a look at now is we are headed west, but the wind seems to be blowing slightly southwest. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually see if I can rotate my sail a little bit. I'm going to rotate it that direction. A little bit more. A little bit more. Perfect. So now you can see that that sail is represented as like highly green, which means that it's catching the wind directly. It's aimed the same direction as the wind, so we're moving quite fast. So we're going to rotate the other sail to the same direction. And we'll hop back on the helm. So you can see our sails are askew, but now we're moving as though we were or headed directly with the wind, even though we're headed at a slight angle to the wind. And that's a very useful function of sails. Like I said earlier, if you have a crew, if you have crew members stationed on the sails, you can actually get them to turn them for you by pressing Shift A and Shift D. You can command your crew to rotate the sails, which is really nice when you get into the end game with the big ships. Like if, say, if you had a galleon with six sails, you're not going to want to rotate that manually. Um, so you get a crew on there, you have them do it for you. It's, it's a lot easier, a lot nicer way to go about it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut until we um, we reach the islands that we're going to. You can see right here we're crossing the server border. Um, 
It's going to put us into D4, this lawless region that I was talking about. So now that we're out of the free port, we can go beyond level 8. And also our ship's going to take a lot less decay um, because of the fact that free ports do haul damage to ships much faster than when you're out here in the actual game map. All right, so let's cut until you reach this island that we're aiming for right here. We're going to go ahead and settle up there. Whatever. Oh, you know what? We're not going to cut because I see a floating crate. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what you can do with that. This is really useful since we're right next to a free port. We could actually get some gold from this and go back and hire ourselves crew to man the sails or whatever if we really wanted to prioritize that. Uh, I don't want to prioritize that. But, oh, shoot. I got to manually put the sails down so we'll fully close sail fully close sail and we're gonna hop back on the helm oh never mind we don't need to well yeah we'll hop back on the helm just to get out of there now be careful when you do this there could be sharks in the water or something i'm gonna risk it because i want that gold so you hop off you find this crate you go up to it and I'm just going to transfer all to my inventory so I can get out of the water as fast as possible. And <clears throat> hop back on the boat. Oh, that is what we're not want. There is a shark. We're going to climb back up. No, it's glitching out. Whew, we're going to die. Come on, there we go. Whew, that was a close one. All right, so we survived the sharks. Now you get to see the full experience of diving for chests. <sighs> and what we gathered while we were down there is we got ourselves a little bit of food, higher end food, we got some gold, we got music that we can play, and we also got ourselves a blueprint so we can make higher quality structures. And that's pretty much everything that you can find in those chests. I got a lot of it, a little bit of it all. So now that we're out of the water and we're not getting sharks i'm gonna go ahead get my sails back open and head on to that island and we'll um, establish a base there if i really wanted a crew that badly i could go back because i've got seven gold and it takes five gold to hire a crew member uh, i'm not brave enough for that other chest right now <laughs> we went ahead and um i found a little area it's got wood, um, looks like there's some fiber around here, all the resources that we need to get started. I didn't see any aggressive creatures, so but you should definitely be on your guard coming to these new areas. There may be aggressive creatures. Just because you haven't seen what, one yet doesn't mean that you won't get jumped by a wolf or a lion or a rattlesnake once you get out and start looking around. Um, but for now, looks like we're in a relatively safe area. Um, got a bunch of good tames horses bears and now that we're actually out of the free port we can start taming things if we want to tame something which is a really really good idea once you have the skills to do it uh, bears are very good at gathering fiber um, the um, the horses are good at hauling large loads if you see giraffes those are good at gathering thatch um, elephants are good at gathering wood and uh, rhinoceroses are good at gathering stone but bears are probably the the best early tame so it's really good that we've got them on that island because they take a lower taming level than some of the other animals um, they're good at gathering thatch and they're also very good say there were aggressive creatures on this island a bear is a, a strong protector and it, it's going to protect you from things that are mess with you um, in fact on my main account i actually live in a polar region where there's these incredibly powerful yetis and I use bears to protect myself from those so if you're not in a super dangerous region like that a bear is going to protect you from anything that you would need to protect yourself against for the most part um, so now that we've actually established this new area let's go ahead and um, let's start looking into getting ourselves a little base built we have the ability to make thatch um, structures already and since we don't have anything else to do until we hit um, level nine and actually get the skill points to make um, wooden structures let's go ahead and we're gonna start 
with a little three by three batch pen for chickens, if I could find those, or maybe some rabbits, you know, any, any small non-aggressive creature uh, you can put in that little thatch pen. Okay, so I've built myself the components for a little thatched um, hut. This is going to be a very simple hut. You can see that I've drug, drug them all down to my quick bar. And that's going to make building this a lot easier. I can just, you know, click and drop. So this is an incredibly simple structure. So, so we're going to start with the nine floors we had. So we want to do a three by three. We got to set the foundation. And you can see that they kind of click together. Like, you know, if I have it out there on its own, I can kind of place it freely wherever I want. But if I put it up next to another um, building structure that it can click onto, then it just clicks together and makes that nice, perfect fit. So we're going to build it out three by three. And then let's go ahead and we're going to put the walls on this structure. So we'll hit eight, select walls, and I can place walls clicked to any clickable wall point. So I'm going to start by doing the side and back walls. But I want to give this a little bit of flair and an entrance to um, get in and out. So we're going to hit T, and that's going to allow us to select different wall types. And you can see there's several to pick from. We're going to do a window to the left and right of where I want the door. And we're going to select a door tile. There we go. Now I want to be able to click a roof on here and have it be a kind of a nice looking roof. So we're also going to set up the walls to accommodate for the style of roof that I want. And I want your standard... Um, what you would see on a normal home where there's kind of a, a triangular roof if you get what I mean so nope. looks like we're gonna have to set I settle for a semi triangle <laughs> all right there we go so we've got the walls up now we're gonna put doors on so I'll select six, hit my door. Now I can open up that. And I'm gonna put open and closable windows. So putting doors in a window slot creates a window you can open and close, which is pretty important because uh, say this is a stone structure and we wanted to be able to fight out of it. So you could hang out this window with a rifle and shoot at your enemies and close it if you're injured. Or you can close it to say stop hostile creatures from seeing inside and trying to attack the creatures that are inside. Uh, they'll have to break the wall to get anything inside, but if you close the windows, close the doors, they can't even see anything. So uh, that takes care of that. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna put the roof on. So like the, the walls, there's some options for roof. I just want the standard roof for uh, this. Let's see if we can get ourselves something like that. Yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, no, that's not really what I want. So can actually just pull that back up. You've got a few seconds after you put down a mistaken tile to um, pull it back up without losing the resources. You get the, the structure part right back. So you can do that if you, um, if you make a mistake. It doesn't look like I can really get up there though. Unfortunately, I need to build a ladder and I need wooden structures to build the ladder. So I'll have to fix that later. All right, so we hit level nine. And we're ready to get started on a ladder. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in 
I'm going to actually select the secrets of building skill that we've been working on for, oh, no, first we're going to select our attributes so we get our skill points. Now we're going to select secrets of building that we've been working on for a while so we can build wooden structures. And the first wooden structure that I'm going to build is I'm going to build myself a craftable wooden ladder. So that's going to allow me to get up and down stories on multi-story buildings. You can also um, use um, roof tiles actually to make kind of like little steps. But I, I like the, the ladders a lot of the time because they take up less space. So start by putting that down there. So now we can climb up and we can fix hope. <laughs> See, this is why it's good that you can pick it back up. So. I didn't leave myself enough room there. I'm gonna have to center that to get the room it would have room to get up. So put that up there. And then we should have the option to just climb right up. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot of intricacies in placing things in this game. So I placed that where it was not rotated correctly, which means it couldn't be used to climb. That one should be rotated correctly, so I can climb up. I can demolish these roof tiles, which since they've the timer tire that the timer has expired, um, it's um, it's not going to give me my resources back. But what it will do is it will um, it'll actually give me a, a portion of the resources that I spent on it back. So it's not a, a complete loss if you um, if you use the wrong type for whatever reason. Um, you can get some resources back from that. You know, I don't think any of these roofs are quite doing what I want to do with them. So I'm going to demolish them both. And I'm actually going to have a um, roof access. I'm going to make a ceiling. Make another ceiling. So what this is going to do is I'm going to finish this off with three ceiling tiles and a ladder. Alright, let's find some hemp. There we go. Missing. Get one more ceiling tile. Get ourselves a ladder. And then we should be able to go back, just put a ceiling for that final row of roof sections. And I'm going to add a little wooden hatch or an area that I can climb out onto my own roof which is pretty cool on a pvp server if say you want to put like defenses up there like often i'll do that um and then put um oops that wasn't what i meant to do oh well um often i'll do that and then put um cannons up there there we go so now we have a wooden ceiling actually that'll work Put a little ladder up there. And we'll climb up. Ah! <laughs> I should rotate that ladder. So, yeah, you can see positioning is very important in the process of building. You want to make sure that you get things positioned well to achieve what you're trying to achieve with them. Demolish. It was too late to pick it up. Oh well. Make another ladder. I'm going to have to check this one to make sure that I can climb that series of ladders. There we go. Climb up. Good for the base. So now we have a walkable roof. We can put a hatch there just with by putting a door, just like we put windows in the window and see if we can climb up without that next ladder disturb. Oh, perfect. Yep, there you go. Can I 
nice and efficient. All right, so there's our deluxe chicken coop. Once we tame some chickens, I'm gonna throw them in there. And then just to make getting in and out a little bit easier. Boom, beautiful. Walk right in, nice even slope. So that gives you an idea how the building system in this game works. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna build a structure to house our crafting equipment. We're gonna do an actual wooden structure because I like wooden structures on a PVP server. They'll be much harder to break into. I believe on these servers, they decay a little bit slower. So we're gonna build ourselves a wooden structure and it's gonna be our crafting area and we're gonna make a new bed there so that we can spawn in at this new base that we've made. Um, I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing. You just watched me build the thatch thing. So you understand how to build buildings at this point. I'll make the wooden structure and then I'll show you a little bit about furnishing it. All right, so at the beginning of this video series, I said we were gonna set out to establish a base, um, leave the starter island and establish our first base. And we've gone ahead and we've done that. Um, see here, I placed a billboard uh, billboards allow you to write whatever you want, so you can say, you know, if this was a, a tavern, you could be like, oh, welcome to the Boar's Inn Tavern or something. Um, you just go ahead and hover over it, hit E, and you can see set sign text, and it'll um, allow you to write whatever you want. So when we step inside this building, you can see that um, we've got a smithy on the right and a loom on the left. Uh, the smithy, of course, is the thing we already have on the boat, but it's it's a good idea to have that at your main base in case you lose a boat or something. Um, and the loom is for making various tailored items. Most importantly, this is gonna be used in making sails when we go to make better boats. Upstairs, we have a large storage chest and then we have a bed so that we can spawn back at this new base. And then outside on the porch, put down a couple of water barrels so that if it rains, we can catch some water and have water readily available at the base. And I did two barrels at the base since, you know, weight's not an issue like it is on the boat. And it's always good to have plenty of water. So that pretty much covers it in terms of getting a basic main base established. Um, now, as this is a PVE server, you can see I did a lot of decorations. Uh, there's railing on in here that's not really necessary, nor is the railing out here necessary. I just did it because it looks nice. Uh, the billboard is, of course, completely decorative and shameless self-promotion. Um, but if this was a PVP server, I'd probably focus less on the decoration and more focus on things like maybe making a separate um, room with a locked door to get upstairs um, rather than just easily accessing and just more in general creating more barriers between people who are trying to get in and steal my stuff and the stuff that they want to be stealing. Uh, maybe even some like fake chambers to confuse them so that they break into a room and there's nothing in there. Uh, the other thing that I'd probably do is you can see that this has a um, a roof that's not really usable for anything. It's a it's a angled roof. I might do more like the roof on my chicken house that you can climb up on it for a PvP server to put some cannons up there facing out into the harbor if people want to um, come and steal my stuff. So maybe some towers and other locations defending this base itself. Um, so yeah, a lot more defensive on a PvP server, less um, showy, more um, utilitarian and harder to break in and steal things. Now, so the next video, I'm probably going to be focusing on the making better ships. As you can see, building that base has um, leveled me up quite a bit. I have a lot of points that I can invest into learning other skills that I haven't invested yet. Um, so if this was me actually playing this server, planning to go out and make this a full-fledged account, I definitely would go on to building a boat next. Um, though if it's a very dangerous island, I might consider doing taming next, though I will cover that in the video after the shipbuilding video. Um, 
as generally I think you'd want you'd want boats before you would want um, to go out and tame since you may need to go to other islands to fetch those tames um, so yeah I, I hope that if you've watched this entire video that you found the information within helpful and there will be more guides hopefully a little bit more succinct guides since the guides after this one i'm going to be assuming a lot more player knowledge of the game um, and really just focusing on the topics of those videos rather than giving all the the intimate details that i've given in this series um, all right hope you tune in for future series and hope you like the video